Um, welcome, uh, people, to our fourth episode with uh, uh, the Secretary General of Freedom Alliance, and uh, Santa Moses Nube. Uh, and in this episode, uh, we'll be covering the state of land in Matveland. Uh, in the past three episodes, we've covered the issue of the genocide in Matveland. Uh, and the issues around Chief Charumbila and the current government uh, program. We've looked at the politics, the state of the politics in Matveland, and also we've looked at the state of education in Matveland. And today we want to focus on the state of um, land in Matveland. And towards the end, we would want to look at what are the common themes between these um, or among these particular issues that we've covered. And Santa Moses Nube, welcome back to the to this Umdumo interview. Thank you, Mr. Tube, and uh, your listener. Thank you very much. How is it where you are? Is is there some rain or anything? Yeah, it's a it's a bit uh, cold today. Although there is no rain, but the weather, the temperatures are a bit low. A bit low. It seems like we're headed for trouble in Matavaland or in Zimbabwe, the rest of Zimbabwe, in terms of uh, uh, drought and hunger. And, you know, it seems things are not going the yeah. way we hoped for. Yeah, that's the situation, and it's a very sad one. It's a very sad one, isn't it? So we'll soon be having some real problems with uh, food and stuff like that. We don't know how we're going to get through that. But um, for today, like I have said, we want to focus on the issue of the state of land in Matveland. This is essentially uh, the main aspect of, of this uh, interview. What do you think is the state of uh, land in Matveland? What, what are the key issues? Do the people of Matveland have their land? Are they living in where they are, or you know, it's a it's a different situation altogether. Yes, uh, in Matavelland, we are still in the era of 1893, yeah. when the end was taken away from uh, the Matavelanders, being taken by the British South Africa Company or, yeah. or the Pioneer Cola. So yeah. now, what happened is, is that. Uh, after 1980, when the white man um, was removed from power, ZANU took over and then they occupied the positions that the whites were occupying. So uh, they are the ones who took over the land. The land is in their hands, beginning with the land uh, farms that were taken away from Zebra until yeah. today. So what the long and short of it is that the land in Matavaland uh, belongs to people from Mashona land. We are actually dispossessed of the land. Even wherever we have got even these rural homes, we have been told that uh, all the land belongs to the president, which means the land is in Nangakwa's property. So mm -hmm. we are landless, we are poor, yes. So essentially what you are saying is that um we had a white occupier and now we have got a uh, a black occupier with the white occupier who dispossessed the people of material and of land and we are saying that once the white occupier was removed in 1980 uh, uh, another occupier came in uh, but just a black occupier so there's a change of color but no change of attitude or programs uh, or, or um, you know, the idea of land occupation in Matavela? Yes, uh, it's like that. And uh, the danger is that when it's a black man, um, you may not uh, uh, read between the thin lines when it's a black man, because it will be like, you know, this is a black government, it's for blacks. But then, mm -hmm. um, Although the, the, the Zapu properties were taken directly, but some of the land was taken indirectly by first empowering uh, people from Mashona land. And then because ZANU doesn't have a, a strong su support base in Matavele, it was also politicized that uh, uh, you had to be ZANU. 
so that mm. he could be there. Then uh, fast forward to the uh, this so-called fast track land redistribution. Yeah. You had to be having links with the sun. And then mm. in Matai, people were not there. So mm. uh, that opened the opportunity for, for people from Matai to come in there and then take over the, the land from Matai. And the fact that now, after the unity accord, uh, mm. when they are having ZAPU in there, it would create a semblance um, that, you know, um, it's, it's a national thing where people have come together and they're having the land. And, uh, and uh, strangely, you cannot be from Matwele and then you go to Mashona and you are saying, we are on Hondo Eminda, then you are, you are having the land. So now, it's a, it's, a, it's a tribalism that came in uh, where people are mm. even saying they are fighting material and over what they call historical injustice, which are just a figment of their imagination. They create stories, create lies, and end up believing the lie. So ZANU being there plus its um, modus operandi of tribalism has dispossessed the material lender of his own land. Even communal land, they have taken it. So I was actually about to come to you know what types of land. So so basically we are saying land that was owned by commercial farmers. So some land from commercial farmers that was taken over has been taken over not by locals but from by people from outside Matebe land. And you are saying now there is also communal land that's being taken. Do we have a, a an idea in which areas and which farms in Matavaland um, this land has been taken and where people are mostly settled? Do, do we know? Um, we we may not have the 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 full um, uh, amount of of land that has been that has been taken because mm. that would need a land audit and a proper one. Which mm. they have said they are going to do. Yeah. Uh, if, if you remember, after Mkabi was uh, disposed, it was said that his daughter was having, uh, I think, 22 or 23 farms. Um, yeah. And yeah. that tells you that uh, lots of people in Zan, including Mnangakwa himself, they have that as well, uh, mm. having all that kind of land. So now, what we, that, uh, that gives us evidence that. Uh, all the land is taken and given to, to Zanu people. Czech people like Opet in Bofin Matevele, they mm. take all the land, it's theirs. Several of Akukulu's just like what whites did. I think these people are so incensed, and those whites were like their role model. Because what mm. they are doing, you can think of the Smith regime, you can think of the time of Garfield, Titot, and others. That's mm. what these people uh, are doing. So it's lots and lots of land. Go to Umkuza, go to Bubi, in, in material north, everything is taken. Uh, go to check even if you think of forest, like Gwamba forest, it is taken. Mm. And mm. when also on communal land, which mm. is non commercial uh, of course, they will get it there. Uh, the soap that is there has got to have an allegiance with the ZANU. Uh, anyone who is a commissar there has got an allegiance when someone comes from Torashan, they cannot tell that person that, you know, you don't come here because they are afraid that in their part there will be consequences. So they will even allow people to, to occupy in communal land without following due process. In Kai, for example, um, there, there is a, a guy called Gwemba who was working for Zesa. He, he yeah. actually said it himself um, forcibly. In um, in the areas where I, I come from, I was born in Kai, that place in Chaipuma there. Right. It's an area where I should be able to stay there. They come in there, they build their, their homes. No one will tell them anything. They disregard everyone. So uh, material land is dispossessed from its land in, in very inexplicable ways. Um, mm. It's really shocking, but uh, strangely, uh, the material lender will uh, seems not uh, to to realize it um, in some uh, context, especially when it comes uh, to to politics. You know, when when you talk about, I understand obviously issues around um, 
farms that were occupied or taken over by government is the government that issues out um you know whether you own this farm and stuff like that and then people have been put in there maybe external to material majority of them but when it comes to communal land the person in charge of communal land is the chief and then the headman and everything so who is parceling out this land because if someone is coming out uh, is coming to a particular area as far as i'm aware is that that person has got to go to the chief or go to a particular area where there is a headman and request for some land and then that will be communicated to the chief and then it will be agreed that okay so and so can then have a particular uh land and where it is going to be you know i think that's how it happens and it's the same issue with uh, even you know if you are a son whatever you want a particular piece of land your father will have to tell you okay i give you this part of my bit and, and i'm sure that it still has got to be communicated to the chiefs so who how do then do you think people come into circle in these areas who is responsible for circling them yes the the, the problem is zanu zanu is the cancer of our time uh, remember when zanu came into power um it was zanu and uh, the white clapping uh, together against mm. the people of materially and uh, the propaganda that was used was well put um in in machonale uh, just mm. like what the white men did uh, to compromise the chiefs um the crawl heads the sapus if you may call them also when i love mm. right mm. um now those people have been compromised because right now they have been made it to be like their party commissar of course yeah. there are some who do not agree with that some buy into it uh mm. there will be given some freebies which um are meant to to dampen their spirit in the defense of of my of my table mm. for example um if you have seen uh our children when they go to school she's a girl and mm. then um uwind uh, says to her no don't pay me he gives a, a free ride the girl mm. will feel like he's owing um that wind uh something and uh, the mm. next thing you might find the girl being pregnant because yeah. she, she is naturally thinking that i'm paying back the kindness that has been there yeah. so um zanu has weakened um traditional structures remember yeah. that uh, traditionally oriented matebelelen belongs to the king yeah. uh, and belongs to izinduna yeah. um now um we do not have a king who was who was uh, disposed by the white man and then uh, zanu has perpetuated that um mm. and they've taken um the the chiefs and then they, they are making them to be like they they are party functionary they've got to be presenting zan and now when someone wants to settle there especially when the person is from ashurali it's very difficult for the chiefs and uh, the crawl heads to say no because once they are saying no they know that the cio will visit them uh whether mm. the police can come in there or a a a high ranking zanu uh, official will be there so they will be intimidated they end up letting it go because they will be thinking zanu is known that is, those are genocides they will kill you at any point in time so what you need to do according to the thoughts of others is just to let zanu do as, as they like and they are bringing their children there they bring their people to work in the school mm. that is there they built their homes there uh, mm. they campaign for political positions there they mm. are actually taking over and uh, the land is the mother of everything where there is no land there is no politics there is no economy that's why material land is dead everything is going to machonary thank you so much for being on umdumo interview which is part of ngongulyesizwe production Uh, and a, a media arm wing of the 1893 Mtoga's human rights restoration movement it's been very captivating very interesting to engage you thank you so much we'll arrange a, a, another appointment to look at other issues in matwelen because i'm really interested in getting the perspective of the freedom alliance and its agenda in matwelen